Just got back yesterday from Shinnecock Hills. Uh, went out to the U.S. Open. It was incredible. Uh, so <clears throat> I just took a bunch of footage. I'll just stick it up in this. I'll try to edit it. Maybe do a talk. I haven't actually seen the footage myself, so I'm just doing this and I'll edit it. Uh, we took the train out there in the morning, me and my friend Corey Brackett. Hello, Corey. And it was so much fun hanging with you. Um, so yeah, we. I did a. I had a bit of a two pronged idea of what I wanted to, to see. I wanted to see the course and then I wanted to see guys, you know, practicing and working out. And then I wanted to see, um, you know, just uh, their routines and we'll study them a bit. Um, so there was a bit of a space limitation to, to the where, to where the practice facilities were. Um, so there was a little small putting green, then there was a chipping green, but you couldn't really access it, which is fine. Um, and then uh, there was a range, the range obviously at the, the grandstands. Uh, we didn't end up at the range until late, very late in the day. The only person there was Scott Piercy hitting balls, which was fun to watch. Uh, but I did get to see a whole bunch of people at the putting green. Uh, Beef, Jonathan, the awesome player. Uh, <clears throat> Tony Finau was there. Uh, Jim Furyk was there working with um, Bob Rotella. So I'll talk about that in a sec. <coughs> just a whole bunch of people. Um, Lucas Glover, just, you know, just people. It was great. I didn't really... We went on Tuesday, so I wasn't really expecting to see, went late, wasn't expecting to see Tiger fail. I don't really care. I mean, I love those players, but, you know, I just, like, I just wanted to go see the course, and uh, I wanted to see them prep and followed Sergio for a little bit, uh, saw Fiora hit some balls, um, went to the seventh, sat at the seventh green. That green is diabolical. So, people say this all the time, but it's true. Video and TV footage just don't do these the elevation changes <clears throat> at these courses justice. You hear that a lot about the Masters. And I'm going to have to say it's probably going to be the same at Shinnecock. Uh, this is the first time I'd ever seen the course. It's pretty incredible. It's unbelievable. It's probably the diff most difficult golf course I've ever seen in my life. Um, seven, the drop-off behind it is, you know, 10 feet. It's just a clump. It's like a bump in the middle of, of the landscape and there's a green on it. And to, to think that they built this course and routed this course with the final layout, sure, I know that Corey Crenshaw did an update, but most of the layout was done by like 1923 or something or 20, whatever. Uh, it's unbelievable. So it's incredibly challenging. We walked around the front nine, <clears throat> then we sort of scooted around the back nine in typical USGA fashion. They don't tell you anything that's gonna happen. So. We were out on the back nine wandering around and people were sort of telling us stuff, but it turns out there was a, uh, a match between, they were saying it was a celebrity match, but it was like the US Open amateur champ, the, the British am, the women's amateur champ, and I think the mid-am champ, and the honorary starter was Jack Nicholas. So again, we're there, we're, well, I guess nothing's happening, we'll start walking around. So. Found out about that later. Same thing happened to me at Marion with that big picture with all the past champions. I was there. They were putting all these chairs out in front of the clubhouse, and I was like, well, I guess nothing's happening. I'll go back to New York. Ten minutes later, they've got every, and I think Billy Casper was there too. It was probably one of his last public appearances. And um, yeah, so USGA, come on, let people know what's going on. Uh, but maybe that's on purpose. They don't want it to be crazy, and they just want to, you know, have some stuff for the television. So. Anyways, but the back nine is incredible. The course is incredible. So I'll just throw some video up. It's going to be a great test. <clears throat> they had rain today. I was going to go play golf today, but of course it's raining. So of course, any day I pick to go play golf, it rains. Um, it's, it's a little clear now, but it's like, I'm doing this at 5 o'clock, so I'll get out there in an hour. So, but I think I'll go out on Friday. Um, yeah, so I'll put the video up. I hope you enjoy it. Um, it's going to be a great tournament. Uh, I don't know who the course suits because it's such a Lynx course, but it's huge. It's 7,400 yards. The front nine is, if they play it from all the, the tees, it's like 3,800 yards. So it's it's a Lynx course, but it's it's this, it's this it's just incredible. I can't, it's sort of, you know, it defies description. Um, <clears throat> so I'll try to get all the holes we did and, uh, you know, some of the stuff. Um, got to talk to Bob Vokey for a bit. He was, such a nice guy. I can't believe it. everything you see in the video. <clears throat> you see that Mark Crossfield video or him online? He's just like that. Uh, got to talk to Bob uh, Rutella. 
thanked him for all of his work. He was working with Jim Furyk and right on the phone, and I tried not to bother him, but I got a picture and got his autograph. Uh, told him he helped me break 70. He was very enthused about that. Uh, seems just like a great guy. Um, <clears throat> got to talk to uh, a couple of the young, younger players. Got, got to talk to Sean Foley. I had I played junior with him a couple years in advance. Uh, you know, hadn't seen him in years. Not that he knows who I am, but uh, we sort of knew some, you know, it's the same people. So uh, he was out there. I don't know who he was working with. Um, got some autographs from Justin Rose. Uh, Fluff McCallan I got. That was pretty, uh, that was pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I didn't really focus too much. I just took my autograph book because I hadn't seen it in 40 years or whatever, so I thought it'd be cool to get a couple updated things, but I saw I got Bob Vokey. Talked to him for a bit, like I say. Just a saint. Um, full of information, even in a five-minute conversation. So um, so there it is. I hope, a little bit of long in, in, intro, I hope you enjoy the footage, and uh, yeah, it's going to be a great week. So just thought I'd do my usual voiceover here. Um, so this is a train actually here in Brooklyn. It's actually super close to me. So <clears throat> got up in the morning, went down to the train station. They had an express train set up. It was, um, it was good. You know, I mean, it's a slog to get out there. I think it was a couple of hours by all said and done. Um, but yes, just jumped on the train. So that was great. Uh, it took us this. USGA actually built a specific uh little terminal for the uh, hey, for the course. So. <laughs> Corey. And it was just, you know, usual thing. You go in and it feels like you're getting on a flight. You gotta put everything. So here's the iconic uh, clubhouse up at the top of the hill. So everything sort of comes back to the clubhouse. The first green, the first tee goes off. The ninth green comes right to the clubhouse and then the 18th is a little bit further away. That might have something to do with the original layout only being 12 holes. Uh, and this is sort of the pavilion that you come into. So there is the ninth green, there's the clubhouse, um, the grandstands, uh, and then there's the 18th below it, and then this is a panorama of the two, like the closer, well now we're looking down the first tee. So you can see how tight, how sort of compact um, the sort of course is. So I decided to just come out to the first tee and hang out for a little bit. <laughs> see who was going to tee off. I, I didn't even know anybody was coming up. So the first person was uh, Brent Sandiker here, so I thought I would just watch him hit a shot. Uh, actually, I got his autograph later. So nice, nice guy. Um, so here he is. Not teeing it up, by the way. Um, always interesting to see how pros deal with irons off, off tees. So there was sort of a landing area. Uh, this hole was playing 399, but it was, you know, obviously screaming downwind. Uh, there's a landing area. Some bunkers come into play if you hit it too far off to the right, and it was sort of a crosswind, so you can see why these guys were just trying to, like, loop, loop an iron down there. So here's Brent Seneker. Down there. I, I can't remember who he was playing with. Uh, I think it was an amateur um, or a uh, qualifier. Someone, uh, there was some nice pairings. It seemed like a lot of the guys were helping the uh, the, young, the younger guys out. But I mean, some of these, I mean, I don't know if he played in 2004. So a lot of these guys haven't played the course. Whereas in 2004, a lot of the guys had played uh, in 96. Uh, so there's just people taking some pictures, this was first tea ceremonies, um, and you can just see how windy it was. So apparently they got rain today, which is Wednesday, uh, but and then, the, yeah, look at the flag, up there. <clears throat> it's like a 15-foot you know, flag and it's blowing like it's a green uh, flag on a green. So it's waited for Sergio, he's getting ready, he played alone, um, so we decided to go out and sort of follow him for a couple holes, and he teed it up, so here we go.
he <coughs> got it down in the center. They were just, uh, you know, placing balls, dropping a bunch. A lot of guys weren't playing the full <coughs> course. So this is the ninth. As you start walking down the first, to the right is the ninth fairway coming back. And you can see the netting they had just to, you know, make sure that the course wasn't getting beat up. Um, as you can start to see, uh, incredible rolling areas. This is now at the ninth tee going back. This is Jim Furyk. Um, I can't remember who he's playing with. A couple uh, Asian players it looked like. Um, there's Fluff and Callen. Uh, you see him a little bit later going out and actually walking the course again. Um, and then, uh, so you probably see who's in there. I think there's a couple of Monday qualifiers. Um, so yeah, that's going up to the ninth. Now this is the second hole, 252-yard uh, par three. I think for the members it plays at around 180 or 190. <coughs> but there's a tee back there, uh, 290. So there's Sergio, way back in the corner, um, and I don't know if you can see his ball, but it kicks. His first shot is in the bunker to the left. That's about 20 yards short. Uh, now this is going into the third, so the they hit over that bunker, and it's sort of the landing area uh, come, it comes in. This is the green. Now, this is the seventh. So you come down that fairway, and uh, the seventh green is right beside it. So uh, we'll see a little bit. But that's Sergio. This is playing 500 yards. Crazy downwind, and they were probably hit about 120 in. Uh, the fairways were completely rolled, so they were getting tons of roll. This is looking back up the 8th, so a bit of a haphazard, but you can just sort of sit <clears throat> in this one area and the 3rd is behind us, then you'll see basically the 7th green here. So the 7th green sits in between the 3rd fairway and the 8th fairway, and then there's some holes that roll, go out. And you can see the drop there, I mean, it's unbelievable. Um, this is like a postage size green, and then this is now, um, yeah, this is back to the 8th fair. No, this is the, this is the green back on 3, I think. No, this is the 8th green, I'm sorry. This is the 8th green, we walk back along, and you can just start to see, um, some of the undulations and, and the false fronts and I mean eight is a 439-yard par three. Ninth tee now going back up. Ninth is playing was 485 um, into. So you, if you can remember, there's like a dip that if you can get into that uh, landing spot, you're going to get you know extra 30 yards for sure. So longer hitters will it will help them but they can also kick off into a lot of trouble the greens they they've, they've said a lot about making the uh, fairways wider which i think is helpful now this is the ninth green and then we're back at the uh first tee again so the, the ninth green is to the left here so you know where the, the crowd is right there on the left of the screen and over so here we are now at the uh Putting green, Bob Bertella working with Jim Furyk, <coughs> and then got a nice picture with him. He was nice enough to take a picture and give me an autograph. He was on the phone, he even put his phone down. He didn't have to do that. So a real sweetheart of a guy. Uh, so I was I was happy once this happened. My day was done. <laughs> so we went out to side decided to take a look at the back nine. Um, give Bob a little extra screen time. Uh, he was working with a lot of people on the phone. He was with Bob, Jim here for about an hour. Maybe an hour and a half. About an hour. So this is now the 10th. Uh, coming down, then you can see there's, um, you know, again, a, a drop-off <clears throat> and a uh, crazy run-out if you can get to that spot. Um, and now here's the green, which is pretty insane. Now this is the 11th, which is a totally insane up the hill par 3, 160 yards. But just insane. Here we are walking up to the green. Cool. 
look at this. And look at that. So if you miss it to the left, and you're maybe a club short, it rolls all the way back down here. And this is like 60 yards back. It all funnels down into this bottom area, and then you have to go up. And it's uh, a plateau green. This is now the 12th hole, which is a really long uh, par 4. And you can start to see in this back nine where a lot of the sand dunes come in. It's really, it's, you start to get into a real sand dune um, terrain. Uh, this is obviously pretty out of play. Which someone wouldn't get in here. But here's the green, now the 12th green. And you can just see these runoffs. Um, it, you know, any missed shot and you're just not staying on the green. And then you've got a pretty diabolical chip. If you've been following some of the commentary on the Golf Channel, they're talking about the, you know, the uh, some of the tightness of the lies, and that is true when you're walking around it's very tight. This is now going off the 15th tee, <clears throat> so we, when you come up to the uh, 12th green, it's sort of uh, the, this tee is right beside it. So there's some guys hitting shots down. It was 409, and you can just see the elevation drop. <clears throat> Bunkers on the left and right. Uh, so, there were two tees. This is the back tee. Some of the guys were moving up. There's another tee just down the, uh, you can see there. They might have put, might played that. Then you could, that was pretty easy. You could clear over it. But from this tee, all that stuff comes into play. Um, can't remember who this was. Um, probably another Asian player. It was hitting really nice. Watched him for a little bit. Hit a few balls. Um, then to our left. Now will be the 13th. So this is the 13th hole. A short, quote-unquote, short hole. And now this is Fluff McCowan out walking the course again. This is an, after doing an hour with Jim Furyk on the putting green and playing nine holes, maybe. He's out walking the entire course again. And uh, it's pretty incredible to see these guys at work. So this is uh, a 374 Par 4, which feels like, oh, I'm going to get a, finally a bit of a break, but it goes into, again, just a crazy landing area. And then, yeah, if, you just, if, you're, if you're too much, you, you go through the fairway. Um, this is looking back to the, there's the 12th and 15th, <clears throat> and that's the 11th up at the top of the hill. It's called the top of the hill. <clears throat> this is now the 15th uh, green that we watch those guys hit down from the hill. Now this is the 16th coming back. So 16th is a 616 yard par 5, which was playing into the wind. Uh, if this wind... I was trying to ask some folks if, if there was a prevailing wind, but I don't know. No one seemed to really know what, what I meant. Maybe I don't know what I'm saying. I'm not saying. But is there a wind direction that prevails for most of the time or the day at the course, or does it switch? I mean, there was, when we were there, a, you know, an incredibly strong wind that was not really switching. I didn't really feel it switch. Now, this is the uh, 14th. No, the 15th, I'm sorry, the 15th. Again, another small, no, the 14th, I'm so sorry. The 14th, a little shorter, well, not shorter, 519, but you come from a pretty tall, elevated uh, green down to these rolling areas. And then, I don't know if you can see that ball, but one of them just hit, and then <clears throat> a yard further to the center of the fairway, it would have rolled on, and then it rolled down into that bunker. Now this is the 16th, no this is 17. Why am I playing the stupid tournament? This guy was just, I had enough. I'm out of here. I don't know if you hear my point. Um, sorry, that was 16. Now this is 18. So 17 goes down as a little part 3, uh, 175. Now this is the 18th, right from the fairway, looking up. There's the 9th. So you can see the incredible change in elevation into the, both of the greens. Um, and there's the clubhouse. And then the first tee back where we were started from was right at the top of that hill. Back out to the putting green at the end of the day, just seeing some guys. 
So the putty, the chipping area is down in that far green, which it wasn't accessible, but there was a chipping area guys could chip into. There's the golf channel uh, live from, I think Justin Leonard was, was talking when we were there most of the day. Um, and then, you know, player's walkway over to the clubhouse. Um, they were being pretty generous with their time. Obviously, it was, uh, you know, practice round. So we decided to walk back out around the course a little bit. Um, at the end of the day, this is the eighth. Um, so the grounds crew were starting to work, and uh, there's still some people out doing practicing. Uh, so yeah, we could get some pretty good access. There was no one really there. You could really get on the course. So this is the eighth. I'm not trying to bother the guys, but I did want to get up close to them. And then this is the ninth. Uh, so 485 downwind. Um, so this is walking through, obviously beside the T, and then getting right up into uh, the fairway here. We're walking up the 18th hole. Um, so clubhouse, first T to the left, well to the right I should say, green to the left, and then 18 over where the grandstand is. So you can start to see the routing here, and, uh, and Kenny Perry was taking a picture for some reason at the end of the day, so I stuck around. I didn't get to see Jack Nicklaus, but I got to see Kenny Perry in a suit. So there we go. Uh, yeah, there we go. So a great day. Hope you enjoyed the footage, and can't wait until Sunday to see who can tame this beast of a course.